Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan. We're at the ITC Moria in the capital in conversation with ITC Sanjeev Puri, his first interview since taking over as the CEO. Sanjeev, thanks very much for joining us on it's CNBC a, TV 18. It's a pleasure, Shireen. Pleasure to have you Pleasure here. to have you on the show. So let me start by asking you, I mean, you know, 1986 is when you joined ITC. You've pretty much worked across each of the divisions from cigarettes to foods to infotech even and even uh, ITC Nepal. Uh, you know, as you look forward today at the end of calendar year 2016, Sanjeev, what is the kind of visibility that you have? Well, I think uh, ITC has a very robust portfolio of businesses. Each one of them has a potential to grow in the future. Whether we look at FMCG, where you know we have a very uh, bold aspiration to be 100,000 crores. By 2030. 30, Can you right. give me a more immediate term target? Well, you know, Shireen, we don't give uh, uh, guidance. But uh, certainly, uh, I mean, if you look at uh, uh, the growth rates that we have seen in the past, I think we continue to grow ahead of uh, what the industry is uh, uh, achieving. And we continue to reinforce our market standing. Uh, we continue to launch new products. Mm. Uh, this year itself, we have 25 uh, products in the market. It could have been a little more mm. if, 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 if we were able to do it in this quarter. And uh, we have uh, some categories that we have gone into in the recent past. Mm. You know, in the recent past, we've done juices with Be Natural. We have uh, entered dairy with Ashirwad Swasti Ghee. Then we have gone into chocolates with uh, Febble, a luxury chocolate offering. Mm. And then we have uh, Sunbeam uh, coffee. So uh, clearly, we are, we are in fact uh, uh, focusing on uh, uh, strengthening our presence in existing categories mm. and also uh, getting into newer ones, which, will be, which we are incubating right now, I would say, okay. and would be engines of growth uh, in, the, in the future for sure. Mm. And our uh, uh, strategy. Uh, from a focus on leadership in product mm. where, where we create winning uh, products where for which we set up a very uh, uh, significant innovation engine in the form of our life sciences and technology uh, uh, center at Bangalore which has over 350 uh, scientists mm. and close to 500 patents as of now uh, from and, and and the other other piece of the strategy was always on superior consumer engagement, sure. which we've already uh, always uh, been advocating in the past. And now we are moving into a phase where we want to set up the physical infrastructure mm. <clears throat> to get a very efficient supply chain in place. Mm. So we, we have about 20 projects in the pipeline. And these are in various stages of uh, uh, construction. Uh, some have, one has already begun this year in, in, in uh, Calcutta. And in the next uh, six to nine months, two more will start. Mm -hmm. Now, these are going to give us the physical infrastructure for growth, right. as well as bring in a lot of cost efficiency. Okay. So you've said a lot of things, Sanjeev. Mm -hmm. Let me pick up on each one of them uh, uh, individually. Let me start by talking to you about these integrated plants that you hope to set up. About 20 uh, is what you're targeting, specifically as far as the FMCG business is concerned. What will this really mean as far as margins are concerned? What will this mean in terms of logistics costs, distribution costs for a company like yours? And I'm not talking about, you know, the next 12 months, you know, 24 months, but over the next three years, what kind of margin expansion can we expect because of this integrated facilities that you're talking about? Well, uh, it's like this that, uh, as you know, the, the, uh, the food uh, products specifically are fairly freight intensive and uh, they are uh, uh, products in a range of moderate uh, margin when you compare the gamut of uh, FMCG products. So cost efficiency is very important there. <coughs> so what we are achieving to do there is certainly bring ourselves closer to the market. Mm -hmm. So logistics costs come down. So we are able to service the market faster. We are able to supply fresher stuff to the market. And, and, you know, our whole philosophy is to create integrated value chains. So what we are also going to do, and, and of course is subject to the limitation of the agroclimatic uh, conditions in the catchment area, mm. our endeavor is also to work with the farmers in each one of these areas mm. to develop an integrated value chain okay. from farm to fork. So fruits and vegetables as well? Well, fruits and vegetables is something that is a segment we are not into at the moment. But as you know, in the last uh, AGM, 
uh, Chairman Mr. Vaisi Deveshwar actually said that this is an area we will be actively exploring. And so I is think there a possibility that I, soon I, we will hear an announcement on that you, front? You should hopefully hear an announcement soon on that. And not only fruits and vegetables, but maybe also seafood. Seafood as well? Maybe also seafood, I'm saying. And uh, So then that means the cold chain infrastructure will be part of these uh, it, it will be, facilities as it well? It will be part of it. And what we are looking at is not just uh, supplying them in fresh form. What is more important is to add value by preserving shelf life. Mm. So it could be processed, it could be uh, quick, quick frozen, it could be dehydrated, whatever is appropriate for that commodity. So we'll start with some commodities hopefully in the near future. When you say near future, what do you mean? Over the next year, perhaps we could within within a year for sure. Within a year, some of so fruits and vegetables or seafoods could possibly yes, be something that you certainly. start to offer. Uh, what kind of investments are we talking about? I, I know that in your annual report you list out a number of about 65 odd thousand crore rupees. Uh, you know, just for these integrated facilities, uh, these 20 plants that you speak of, what is the kind of investment number? Uh, well, the the total investments, I, I think the figure that I have with me is that uh, for uh, 65 projects that we have in place and, and I must say this 65 span across uh, many segments of our business we have an approved expenditure of 25,000 crores. My apologies, 25,000 25, crores for 65 25, projects. 25, yeah. A substantial chunk is actually in the area of food, food processing per se. Okay. So that's, that's where the bulk of the investments will be. So given what you are saying, Sanjeev, would it be fair to say that foods is going to be the game changer, foods is going to be the big growth engine as far as ITC is concerned going forward? Well, foods offers, offers us the biggest potential because the, the, that's the area where our enterprise strengths can be leveraged to the most. See, we have the advantage of a very strong agri backend, mm. and we have uh, uh, the advantage of uh, the culinary expertise from uh, the hotels. Yes. And we, of course, have our traditional strengths of uh, trade marketing and distribution and mm. skills of consumer mm. insight and brand building. Mm. So this is certainly the area that uh, offers us a maximum leverage of our enterprise strengths. Mm. So it, it will remain a, a significant portion of our FMCG play and, and a driver of our growth. But having said that, let me also say that... Uh, but it also then gets a larger proportion of the investments as well, doesn't it? It, 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 does, it does get and that's where uh, the bulk of the investments are. But having said that, let me also state that in other businesses, for example, if you look at education and stationery, mm. Classmates is a, is a market leader today. Mm. And that's another example where enterprise strengths have come together mm. because with our paper business, we understand what it takes to provide a good quality mm. notebook, what quality of paper is required for uh, writing. Mm. So we are market leaders there. There are other segments like, uh, you know, agarbattis and, and, sure. and dhubbattis where we are number two. Mm. So I think while f foods is, is our uh, largest segment, but I think we're making good progress in uh, most of the segments that uh, we are into today. I know you don't give out guidance and you have a very ambitious target for 2030, but let me ask you, uh, you know, because this, is, this has been publicly spoken of and you had a target of about 10,000 crore rupees over the next three years for your foods business. Uh, my understanding is that you'd probably get there sooner. I think uh, sooner or later we should get there. I, as you know, I will not give you. A, <laughs> I cannot give you a guidance in line with policy, but sooner or later we will get there for sure.